Okay, I want to talk to you about both pitch and image reconstruction and show you how to do some of the math on these activities, but also talk in a little bit more depth about some of the material related to data acquisition and image quality. So I'll work out these problems for you. If you want, follow along on the worksheet, and uh, we'll make sure that we're clear on these concepts because they are fairly abstract. Um, and I'll also try to make them apply to clinical work. So the formula for beam pitch, and I should point out that beam pitch is the only kind of pitch that we are concerned with, um, is table pitch or table movement, the amount that the table moves in and out of the CT scanner, which happens along the z-axis, um, divided by the beam width. And the way that we uh, figure out the beam width is uh, over here, beam width uh, equals um, slice thickness, um, slice times uh, thickness. So the slice number times the thickness of the slice. So uh, this is the formula that we're interested in right here, and this is what's going to be giving us the beam pitch. We're not interested in detector pitch. Beam pitch is pitch, basically, for our purposes. Uh, so the first problem is asking us 16 slice, uh, and th this term just means multi-detector CT scanner, which we pretty much just call CT now. We don't really use single single detector anymore, but it specifies a multi-detector CT scanner using uh, that slice thickness and uh, a table feed of 15 millimeters per rotation. What is the beam pitch? So we'll set this up. We'll put 15. Um, that's the uh, table movement per rotation, and we're going to divide that. Um, by 16, putting it inside the parentheses because we'll want to do this part first, times 0 0.625, which equals uh, 15 millimeters. I should write my, this is important, we don't want to lose that. And this will also be expressed in millimeters down here, don't want to lose track of that. So the, the millimeters cancel out and that gives us a pitch of 1.5. Now, pitch is a, a dimensionless uh, number. Uh, so it doesn't have like a measurement like a millimeter or whatever, it's just um, the amount of pitch that occurs. And what we're talking about is as we're moving the scanner, as we're moving the patient through the tube, the amount that the scanner is moving as it's kind of corkscrewing around the patient, and this is along that z-axis, z-axis of travel. Um, is, how, is how we're thinking about this. So we got a big long formula if we want to think about scan coverage and this is the amount of movement that we would have from here to here as the patient moves through the, through the tube. And that would be a pitch, so we need to calculate the pitch if we don't know it, acquisition time. And the, uh, the machine will tell you what the pitch is um, at the uh, control console. And we're going to go one over rotation time in case we're doing a rotation time that's shorter than one second. And then we're going to, again, we're going to figure out the, uh, beam, the beam width, which is, again, slice thickness, if I can write, thickness times uh, slice per second, slice per rotation, rotation, and uh, that's going to give us the amount of coverage. Coverage. I'll write it down here. So that's a helpful formula to know as well, because what we're trying to do is figure out how best to um, image the patient. And different uh, in different machines are going to be able to cover that amount of distance with uh, different amounts of time and things like that, and that relates to the amount of contrast that we're using and how quickly we would need to image the area of interest. So um, what's the distance covered for the uh, MDCT helical scan sequence of the 30-second uh, total scan acquisition time, one second rotation time, 15 millimeter slice thickness, and 16 slices per rotation, a pitch of one. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you, the technologists don't sit around and compute this all day long, but they are thinking about it in the back of their mind they are, because it relates directly to how quickly they can administer contrast. So if I have a pitch of one, pitch of one, which is a fairly ideal pitch, 30 seconds, uh, and that's the uh, um, total acquisition time. Uh, 1 over 1 is going to be that um, relationship between uh, uh, rotation time and uh, the amount of rotation. And we're going to go 5 millimeters times, we'll put these in parentheses, 16 millimeters. That is the uh, um, slice thickness and slices per rotation. Um, this actually shouldn't have a millimeter by it, just 16. 
and that's going to give me uh, 2400 millimeters or I could put that in centimeters as 240 centimeters or I could say 7.8 feet either way um, any one of those so uh, th this gives me quite a bit of coverage and that, that, that stands to reason with um, the five millimeter slice thickness that's a fairly fairly thick slice thickness and so that a lot of protocols will, will call for that just for this very reason um, looking at problem five patient undergoing CTA abdominal CT scan on a scanner has an abdomen measuring uh, 450 millimeters from diaphragm to iliac crest the high MA setting is required to accommodate the patient's size, so they're a larger patient. The tube heat limits and data acquisition is 20 seconds. And we used to do this quite a bit. Um, if, you, if you're trying to get an abdomin abdominal aortic aneurysm image uh, on a large patient, you might hit the tube heat limits. Um, and so we only have 20 seconds in which to acquire the images. And this is at a, a, a period of time where we've, we're pumping contrast through the patient's body, and we have a very short window in which the contrast will enhance the, in the aorta. So that's also a time limit constraint. Um, we're using a, a 2.5 millimeter slice thickness, so we're trying to get a better resolution on this image. Pitch of one, eight slices per rotation. So this is an older school CT scanner. Uh, one second rotation time, is it possible to cover the volume of interest uh, in a single acquisition? So we're going to just do our calculation. And, and this is a, a real world problem that we run into, especially if we're scanning on an older CT scanner like this one is, which is a eight slice CT scanner. Um, we've got 20 seconds of time, one second per rotation times uh, 2.5. So we're trying to get that smaller uh, slice thickness for better resolution on an eight slice uh, CT scanner. And that's going to give me 400 millimeters. And so the answer is no. No, I cannot on this with this patient's uh, size and with this these scanning constraints. Either I'm going to have to change the uh, the pitch here, or I'm going to need to change the slice thickness. Probably preferably the pitch. Turn the pitch up a little bit in order to cover the area. So that would move it from a, a pitch that's pretty close to a pitch that's more spread out um, in terms of the uh, area that's covered for each uh, rotation. So moving along here, what is the minimum pitch required for a multi-dimension CT scan app sequence to cover a 550 millimeter volume of interest in five seconds of acquisition time with a 0.5 rotation time and a 0.625 millimeter slice thickness and 64 slices per rotation. So we have a much, we've got a scan upgrade now and we're trying to do some thinner slices, but we're trying to do something quick. Um, and so we do this frequently for like heart or for circle of willis, like we'll look at it the next, in the next worksheet. We're trying to look at something with some detail and we're trying to look at it quick, um, which is a lot of times common. And uh, so the question is, uh, what, what should the pitch amount be? And so I will uh, write that as variable Z, because pitch is that travel along the Z axis, um, in a five second time, right? And I've got a two here because I've done um, the, uh, what was it, 0.5 over one? Uh, yes, 0.5 over one. Um, and, uh, sorry, and then, Sorry, that's one over one point or point five. I'll write that here. What I just did, the math I just did, was this, and that gave me the two. Um, and then it's uh, zero point six two five. So that's the uh, slice thickness, right, uh, mil in millimeters times sixty four slices per, per rotation. Okay, um, and that gives me uh, five fifty. Is what I well, and that's what I need to cover. Uh, 550 millimeters of area that I need to cover in, during the acquisition in order to get the pictures that I need, right? So um, if I multiply all of this out right here, 
that gives me a 400 times Z equals uh, 550. So we know that the pitch is going to have to be greater than 1. The pitch will need to be, uh, if I divide these out, 1.4, right? That's the amount of pitch. So the answer is I need to program in a pitch that's a little bit uh, larger than, than 1, but it's, it's less than 1.5, so it's still in the range of fairly ideal pitches. Moving along, um, and this is something that I had uh, there for us to look at. Um, it, this, even though this is a shorter worksheet, it does require a little bit more thought. We have to use, we have to put on our imagination caps a little bit, and remember back to um, a couple of things that we looked at very early on in the trimester, which is on page five in the textbook, uh, figure um, 1.2, I believe. Uh, it talks about the pixel, and the pixel can be defined as this volume of, in of information, um, generally which is, it houses ha different Hounsfield unit amounts in, in the world of CT, and uh, it has two dimensions to it, um, and we'll call that a pixel, a picture element. Um, versus uh, if we kind of move along and actually we bring in that z-axis consideration like we were just talking about, then we also need to think about uh, the voxel. And the voxel uh, is, has the same um, uh, x and y uh, dimensions, the exact same, but it adds a z-axis as well. And like we've said, this z-axis is the axis of travel through the CT scanner. So one way to think about it is this is actually the patient's body traveling through the CT scanner along the z-axis. And there's an important key term here um, to consider. Uh, when we're thinking about this kind of stuff. We, we like voxels that are um, isotropic. Isotropic, that means that they're close to equal in all three of these dimensions. Um, when they're isotropic in nature, it ensures that no data is lost during uh, reconstruction or especially the uh, post-processing type stuff like multiplanar reconstructions and, and the, the fancy uh, 3D reconstructions that we sometimes do. So these are, these are heavy considerations. If you're lost a little bit, I would encourage you to review um, some, of the, some of the stuff that we have um, in Chapter 6, particularly if you page, turn to page 64, 65, 66 in the textbook. These are really interesting and important pages in the textbook. And there's actually a clinical application box 6-1 uh, on page 65, which is basically working through the same kind of set of a set of considerations, and these are important considerations. These are things that we kind of need to have in the back of mind in time we're operating a CT scanner. Particularly helpful if we're thinking about radiation therapy planning or if we're thinking about uh, fusion imaging. All of this stuff has to be thought about. Um, so the formula for uh, pixel size is going to be the uh, field of view, and that's going to be measured in uh, actual millimeters. So that's important, and, and some of us uh, may have missed it on the quiz. If you have it in centimeters or whatever, no, it needs to be converted to millimeters for this uh, calculation to work, um, uh, divided by the matrix size, which in CT, the most common matrix size is, is 512. Right? And that will give me the pixel size. So that gives me the amount of information in this x and y uh, directions. Right, the, the size, roughly square, of each pixel. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this formula and we're going to start to throw in the, the z-axis and we're going to think about some z-axis uh, measurements that might be uh, acceptable or not acceptable and make decisions. So there's a real critical thinking component to this. And again, I'll be able to step you through it. I definitely would encourage you to check out um, the image at the bottom of page 65 um, in order to better understand this as well as the discussion of uh, isotropic voxels and feel free to email me or hit me up on GroupMe if you have additional questions because the, this um, I'm going to solve these problems pretty quickly but it's easy to get lost. So this first problem 64 slice CT scanner that's good that's a fairly uh, new CT scanner protocol for focusing on the circle of Willis so we're looking at something very tiny and we need again the contrast to be perfusing through it very rapidly and we're going to have a very small uh, imaging window for this we're going to use very small slice thickness so a 0 0.65 millimeter slice thicknesses which is one of the smallest slice thicknesses we could have and a 32 centimeter field of view does this protocol require overlapping reconstructions so the question is are we going to have isotropic voxels um, that result from this, or are we going to have non-isotropic voxel, voxels that will require some kind of overlap um, in post-processing? So um, to, to solve this problem, the first thing that we'll do is we're going to express the field of view in millimeters. Um,
So that's, uh, and I just had to double check something. It was the sheet that I'm looking at. It's a little bit different than the one that I had. That's 320 millimeters uh, divided by 512, which gives me 0 0.624, or 62, let me look at my calculator real quick. Yeah, 0 0.625. So that is exactly isotropic, which is uncommon that you'd have something that would be precisely the same measurement. But if it was close enough, like even if it was a, a, a 0.49 or something, we'd be fine. It would not require overlap um, because all of the information is, is fairly close to each other. Um, so we, we'd be good to go. All right, let's, um, so let's look at one last problem and put on our critical thinking caps and talk about, it looks like an older CT scanner, 16 slice CT scanner. Oh, and we're trying to do a triple A protocol. So anytime I see anything that's angiogram type stuff, we know that we have a, a narrow window in which we're gonna be able to get the contrast in the patient and be able to see what we wanna see. So, and this requires a, uh, in this case, a, uh, point, uh, 0.125 millimeter slice thickness and a 30 uh, centimeter field of view. Does this protocol require overlapping reconstructions? Well, let's uh, set up our, our formula. So again, it's going to be, uh, in this case, 300, um, and that's uh, millimeters. That's for the field of view divided by 512. And according to my math, that gives me a, a 0 0.59, let's say. And uh, that is um, about half of the uh, slice thickness. Um, so the, the, what that's saying is that if I were to draw this out and think about it geometrically, I've got a pixel that looks like this, but I've got a voxel that looks like this. It's about twice as deep as it is um, in these other dimensions, right? So what I would need to do is do some overlapping reconstructions that allow me to break this information up into more segments and avoid um, things like a loss, a loss of information due to volume averaging and things like that. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, thanks. Feel free to hit me up on GroupMe with any questions. All right, bye.